don't really know what to title this video, you know. Obviously, I figured it out by now, but I don't really know what I'm going to title it. But anyway, hello, everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen, and welcome to this video. This video is essentially, if I could just break it down into English, because I don't know the title of it yet, but it is essentially five of my houseplant... I don't want to say X because it's not really the right word, and this is what I'm struggling with internally. More of like just pet peeves, you could say. Maybe that's the right term. Just things that annoy me about plants. Now, it wasn't supposed to be about mainly variegated plants, but I've realized upon making this that a lot of it does really pertain more to variegated plants than none. No real reason. It's just, I guess it's just what irritates me most. So without further ado, in no particular order, I want to tell you about five of my, we'll call them pet peeves, about houseplants and growing houseplants. Okay, first things first, and I have mentioned this in a video a couple of weeks ago on basically variegated, it was like a variegated houseplant rant. So if you want to see that and you haven't already seen that, I will link that down for you below. I'm told it's a little bit funny. So if you want to see that, I'm just saying it's out there. But one of the things I mentioned on that video, and it's something that I cannot stand, is when the leaves of houseplants buckle. Now, this more often than not happens in climbing philodendron. It is not immune though, or the plants are not immune, I should say, to having this problem. I've had it with anthurium, I've had it with monstera, but less so. I've had it with crawlers, but again, that's difficult. There's normally another reason why the leaves don't unfurl properly. Sometimes they'll come out and they'll just stay spiraled and stuff like that. So I guess really this problem pertains the most to like a climbing philodendron. But I gotta tell you about it and I just can't stand it, guys. I can't stand it when the leaves buckle. Let me just pull off a little bit of bran leaf. But this, you see this? You will have experienced this many a time, my friend, many a time, no doubt. And that is buckled not once, but twice now. And because this is now hard enough, the one that has already buckled, look, it's stuck like that. And I mentioned this in the video a couple of weeks ago when I talked about um, like variegated houseplant, just X rant, whatever you want to call it. I mentioned that and I said, look, if you, if you miss it, you've got problems then, you've got problems because you're going to get stuck like this. In a second, I'm going to pick you up another plant that that has happened to, and I've tried to unravel the plant, and it hasn't really helped because once the leaf is hardened like this, you are stuffed. Also, hopefully it hasn't just got really loud. There is rain absolutely pelting down upon the unit, so if it's got a little bit louder, my apologies. We're going to talk through, though. So yeah, this is Philodendron Pink Princess, by the way. Is it pathetic? Yeah, 100%. It's done from a cutting. There's the original leaf. Uh, there's another leaf from it. And now there is a lot of pink in the Pink Princess. Very great, very nice, very good, very nice. However, we have the buckling problem. Now, I've mentioned this before, again, not to repeat myself, but I like to call this Cinderella Syndrome, because if you look at this, personally, let's have a little look. This here reminds me very much of in Cinderella, when the one of the ugly sisters tries to put Cinderella's shoe on in order to tell the prince that basically they are the one that he was dancing with and they are his true love and all the rest. And it ain't. But basically that that image of the ugly sister doing that, obviously there'll be a picture over me talking, so you know exactly what I'm saying. Basically, that's what this is. So I like to call this Cinderella syndrome. Who better to suffer from Cinderella syndrome than a pink princess? Am I right? Literally. They should just call it Cinderella plant, to be honest. Don't see why they don't. Maybe we should just campaign to change the name. Although this is very pink, to be fair. But that's what can happen. Also, you might be thinking, well, what happens if I sort of get to it in time? This happens. This here is a philodendron whip away. Again, it's a climber and the internodal spacing is quite tight. And that is something that I think makes this happen more. So I think it is on climbers where everything's really, really tight knit. And this is definitely something that has happened because this here, believe it or not, that's not just a sheath. This is like a little deformed leaf here that has just, it's just not had the chance. It looks like a little quaver. It's really sad. This one here, I have tried to unwind to some success. But then, guys, if that wasn't enough, it's happened again. It's happened again on top of that. And now we have this. Although I'm, I am hoping that this just unwinds itself and we we are free. Sometimes I do like to uh, to have a little go 
and unloosening this myself, but how often have we done that and then just pushed it way too far and then you rip it? So I'm not gonna push that anymore, but just to show you again, that's what can happen. And that's what it looks like when it happens. It does suck. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what the cause of every single thing on this list is today, because honestly, I don't know everything. I like to think that's obvious by now. In my experience, I would love to tell you it's humidity. I would love to just tell you that but I don't necessarily think that. It's not, I'm not saying it's not humidity. I'm saying it's not just humidity because in here, it's never really shy of about 75%, guys. It's just not, it doesn't drop. Whatever the problems I have in here with plants, humidity, I can almost definitely rule out. If I were to guess what I think the problem is, sometimes, sometimes it could be light, fine. Sometimes it could be airflow. And I know you're thinking, what? But if you think about it, these plants aren't always just completely static with no airflow around them and never jiggling, never moving, right? I think the lack of that sometimes, I'm not saying it causes this, but I'm saying it doesn't help. Do you know what I mean? So if you have plants that are, you know, in, in, in receipt of, no, like near a fan anyway, and they've got airflow and they can move, which you should do for a lot of reasons. But if you've got that, I do think this, this tiny movement helps, for example, leaves to unfurl and stuff like that. So maybe if you've got this happening and you know it's not your light, um, and you know it's not your humidity, maybe it's airflow. Try that, I guess. Again, it's houseplants. It's a guessing game, guys. There's no one size fix all. There's no answer for everything. But I want to show you that because it's damn annoying. It's definitely up there on my list. Because if I'm going to sell that now, granted I wouldn't. It's got two growth points. It looks gnarly. But I've just set myself back quite a way because I, I missed that. So not so good. Let me just pick him up and we'll put him back and then we will talk about some more icks. Or pet peeves, I should say. And now it's time to talk about something with really nice aesthetics. And that is June's Journey. June's Journey is a gorgeous, free-to-download, hidden object mystery game set in the beautiful 1920s. You follow a young woman named June Parker, and your objective is to find out what really happened to her sister, who was unfortunately murdered. Personally, I love a good murder mystery, whether it's TVs, movies, books, anything at all, and even in games, which is why I find June's Journey so intriguing. Murder mystery elements aside, this game is one of the most aesthetically pleasing games I think I've ever played. The art style is very painterly, and all of the scenes are really colourful, and it's actually quite hard to find some of the hidden objects in each level. As you progress through the chapters, you uncover more secrets and clues that will help you solve the mystery of what happened to June's sister. You get to have all the fun of puzzle solving in a gorgeous environment while still having a great overarching story to follow along with. You even get to meet some really interesting and unique characters all whilst in a beautiful 1920s setting. There are other things to do as well. You get to build upon and explore an entire island. The more you progress through the scenes and the chapters, the more areas you unlock. Personally, I really want to get to that area at the very top of this island because I just, I don't know, I just feel like there's something up there. June's Journey is such a fun game and I really think you'll enjoy playing it as much as I have. Download June's Journey for free by clicking the link below in the description. June's Journey is available on Android and iOS mobile devices as well as on PC through Facebook games. Thank you very much June's Journey and back to the video. Right, the next thing I want to talk about, I'm just going to be honest, I've called it firing blanks, okay? I know, I don't know why my videos lately have this really weird dating odd theme running through them. I promise it's not deliberate, it just seems to happen to me. But I took one look at these today and I thought, hey, you know, here's some plants that demonstrate this. I hate this when I have when it happens. What would I call it? And I took one look and I thought, well, it's firing blanks. So <laughs> this henceforth, guys, is how I would love it if you referred to it, because why not on this channel? What I'm talking about essentially is not just found in these plants, so it's not just found in supervining plants, but it, it kind of is for the most part, right? I'm talking about this. Now, one is worse than the other, and I hope you can see it. We'll start with this. These are both Skindapsus, by the way. Not the only plant to do this at all, but they're very good at it. Very good at it. Very good at it. But here we have a couple of nodes with no leaf on. Can you see? I hope you can. Yes. I would call this firing blanks, especially at the bottom here where we've got nothing, 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 and then it's gone, ooh, leaf. Oh my god, I'm literally tangled. This is why you don't really hold up two at once. Thank you. Thank you. So that is one scenario. But really, if I just 
pop that down on the floor because the better scenario is this one because this sucks. And this has not had care different from anything else. I'm not saying it's had a ton of feed, just gonna be honest, okay? I'm kind of waiting on some new feed because I ran out and just with the way production is at the minute, I did talk about this last week, but the way production is at the minute on my new feed, I didn't want to get some for myself until it was ready for everyone else because I thought two birds, one stone. So I'm kind of waiting for it. But even still, guys, this is annoying and I don't think it should always happen. I do think feed will probably prevent this if you want like what is the prevention for this i think it's feed but this is what i'd like to call firing blanks how ugly is this though this is a gorgeous vine like it's got lovely variegation it's not perfection but it's quite good so i'll show you that leaf there that's quite sexual and then we have this one here that's quite sexual and then this one here that is also quite sexual and then we have blank 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 so that's what i'm calling it no offense intended it's a plant and there's empty spaces on the vine and that is literally that simple guys but it annoys me does this annoy anyone else or is it just me or or counter offer is this because i'm too lazy to fertilize my plants half the time and i'm bringing it out myself answers on a postcard because when it was good look one two three it was real good and then all of a sudden meh, and then we have nothing for a bit. Because that's not sexy, is it? It's not really Instagram. Like, you couldn't put that in a nice pot and be like, oh, look at that. You know what I mean? It's a bit shit. So let me know if that happens to anyone else, but it does happen to me, specifically more so, I should say, with skindapsis. It, I mean, it can happen with philodendron, like micans and stuff like that. Just tends not to, really. Um, it can happen with hoya and things. I'm not, like, I'm not not including hoya and things like that on this list. But these guys, pff, Jesus. Seriously, it's, uh, it's prominent shall we say. It's so prominent. It's French, guys. It's prominent. Alrighty then. I have two examples for the next pet peeve that I'm going to show you, and it's the most obvious one of them all when it comes to variegated plants. Like, everyone, I guarantee it, everyone has experienced this at some point, or knows of someone that has, and it's very irritating. I'm talking about the classic, the classic, the OG reversion. You feel me? And this is a really good example, and this pisses me off. This also also demonstrates another point that I continuously make. I continuously make about these plants so much. And I wish I'd noticed this two weeks ago when I did my rant because this, this is, this is what I'm talking about. So I will sort of side note this, but in terms of reversion, in this case with this specific plant, this is a half moon problem. Okay, okay. I do go on about this a lot. I am very sorry, guys. I know you're hearing this for like the 99th week in a row. However, this annoys me because this plant, can you see what's underneath all of this? It was sexual. It was doing everything that anyone would want it to do. It was It was good. Life was good. And it gave me these, which are just... Oh, oh, so nice. I do think this is Skindapsis Jade Satin. Variegated, by the way. Not confirmed, but I think it is. But I've cut it. Because why? Because this is gorgeous. And I cut it. And I knew, guys. I knew when I cut this. I thought, oh... Shit. because high chance of this happening what has happened you ask well i've cut it case in point here can you see that yes great good and it has proceeded to grow for me awesome yes it's grown me this though guys see this see this see this it has grown me a big fat lump of nothing and this this is why i keep saying to everyone if you like half moons great this is known as a half moon by the way if you like them great just don't cut them. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. This was perfection. Most people would die for this. I know this is like the Instagram. This is what everyone wants. Because honestly, most of the time, this is what looks most phonogenic. I do get it, guys. I do. I know why half moons sell because they do look cool. They do. I get it. But the reality of living with it, especially if you want to make some money off it, it's not that hot. You are playing with fire, and this is an example here, because I'm probably going to have to cut this back again. Or worse, I'm going to have to cut it between these two nodes here, right? Between these two leaves. And I already know that when I do that, I'll get a yellow leaf and a green leaf. So it's like, what the hell do I do? So obviously this is going to get cut at some point. I don't even see... I don't even see variegation in it. What I do see, and I bet I can't show you. I just bet I can't. But in where I've cut, if I get right up to that, you should be able to see where, where the variegation is there. It kind of goes halfway up. It's just not there with everything else. And I get this shit. So that, I could not not mention that in terms of my my pet peeve or my ick or whatever being reversion. The other thing I'd show you, it's not as exciting as this one. It's nowhere near as rage inducing as this one because this variegated plant, although this one is not now, this is like variegated offcuts of it. The variegated one of this has given me just the best time and I keep banging on about it. So this would have been variegated Syngonium geopensi. It's more just Syngonium geopensi now. I say that though, I have to tell you, there is still variegation running up 
the petioles. Can you see it? I really hope you can. Up this one here, you should be able to see it. And there is like the teeny tiny bit here. <laughs> teeny, 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 tiny variegation. But for the most part, it's reverted. But I do what anyone else does. I group them together. I let them grow and I pray for variegation to come back. So this is like an acceptable thing for me because in this case, I can see that it's on its way. Like I know that obviously because I've cut this off as an off cut wanting to keep the variegated bit. So I already know when I had this, that this wasn't quite what I was after. Do you know what I mean? The other stuff like the half moon stuff is the really irritating stuff. This doesn't irritate me. This is very predictable when it comes to this sort of stuff. Did I think I was going to get super variegation from that? No, obviously not. I think I'd have to be smoking something. Okay. Though that was never going to happen. But never say never. It is in the stem and it can come back. Having said that, in this newest leaf, which is this one, in terms of the petiole, I can't really see much. I'm going to be honest with you. But of course, at some point, probably cut here because there's some nice aerials. Grow that out again. See if we can just get something else from it. So we'll see. So this is not so bad, but it's still reversion. The other one, no, no one wants, trust me guys, no one wants this headache. No one does. No one wants to pay money for this headache. My next pet peeve I want to talk about is mm, the causes. Ooh, difficult, but I'm going to tell you what it is basically. My next pet peeve is essentially melting on plants, slightly different from burning, which we will get to, but I want to talk about melting and I've got a really good example to show you and you will, a lot of you will remember this. I'm not having the best look growing it guys. Wow, there's a lot of spiders webs there. Definitely spiders and not spider mites. That was an actual spider that. But anyway, so if you can see what I'm talking about here, look at this. It's literally, it's not really crispiness. That's not what it's doing because it's going translucent here at the end. Can you see this? Oh my God, hang on. I'm dribbling down my own arm here. Hopefully you can see that there, that it, it is going translucent. I don't know if I put my hand behind it, if you can see. Yeah, you kind of can look. It's not easy to see, but it is there. It's just, it's not happy. And I probably will try a different medium with it and see if I can get it a bit happier than this because it doesn't like life very much. And that's a big shame. I assume it, this is how the plant is and there's no, you know, there hasn't been anything bad happened to it, if you know what I mean. Spray, spray, chug, chug. I don't think that. Um, I might check on that at some point, but I don't think that's what, what it is here. I think it's just having a terrible time in my conditions because when it does grow, it starts off really nice. Look, it's not really sizing up. It was at one point. It does grow really nice and then it just, ugh. Just goes horrible. Like, look at this here. Having a bad, 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 bad time. So I want to show you that just to talk about it, to basically tell you how shit it is, because it is. There's another one there that's very, very melty. You see what I'm saying? It's not burning. It's different because going translucent and just sort of ew. Now, a lot of times, and it could be happening to this plant, I can't see the roots in the bottom, but a lot of times this is part of something called edema. It's essentially when there's just too much water. There's just too much water inside the plant and it just sort of breaks down and the plant can't handle it. It's too much. It can't transpire and get rid of it well enough for whatever reason. Either the roots are suffocated or perhaps the external environment is too humid, which could definitely be happening in my case. It's 75% in here. It's not great. Um, it could be something like that. So there's a few reasons why it happens. So I don't want to give you a definitive reason because again, I can't, I'm not you. I don't have your conditions. I don't know if you're holding a lighter to the damn thing. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you're steaming it under a kettle. I don't know. But that's what it could be. In this case, honestly, I haven't even been looking at this plant, so I don't even know what's been happening to it. Um, but it, it's not had the best time. But that's the best example of melting that I think I have in here. It does happen a lot. It can happen to other plants. Obviously, this is a homolamina. It can happen to philodendron. I, I don't see it happening to Monstera as much because they're just very, they're very leathery and waxy Monstera. This, to be fair to it, is an extremely thin-leaved plant. So that is definitely where you have your risk a little bit. I've had it with other plants. I've had it with Spiritus Sancti and stuff like that, like my big boy up there. You can get it on anything, but that was the best example to show you anyway. I'm going to put him down because he is pretty miserable. I won't lie. Bless him. So cute. The last thing I want to talk about, this, there's nothing wrong with this plant, by the way. I've repotted it, but there's so much root. The, the stump of the plant won't fit in the pot. And as a result, it's just wobbling everywhere. But can you tell, guys, what I might be about to talk about? Can you tell? Can you tell? Yes, I'm going to talk about burning. Uh, again, I've covered this very recently in my variegation rant because this, this is a thing. Why does it happen? I don't know. Hear me out. So it could be a lot of things. It's usually light or feed though. 
but it can be underwatering as well. So in some cases here, it could be light that's done that. It could be fertilizer burn. So you've either fertilized it too much or you've given it something too strong and it can't handle it and it's got Ew, sorry, no, ew. It could be that. It could also be underwatering because variegation is just such, such a delicate part of a plant. It's why dealing with variegates is just a fucking nightmare. It just annoys me, but it's what we live with. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it can be a variety of reasons this happens, but what I will say is this plant specifically, the Monstera aurea, because that's what it is, by the way, he's just, he's just young. He's been cut from a few times. That's why he's very young. He's been propped from. I will keep my finger on the stump so he doesn't move. But yeah, this is Monstera aurea. It comes in like this, if you didn't already know. And then it will harden off to not, not, not full yellow. It's more of a creamy yellow when you get it really nice and solid, when you get all three layers. It's not just yellow. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it is yellow, but it's, it's quite creamy. <laughs> Does that make any sense? It's not just like phew, yellow. I've got other plants here. In fact, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. And then you will understand because a lot of you probably sat there going, um, it's just yellow, Kaylee. No, that is yellow. See, 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 see. Yellow, not quite yellow. Look at where they cross. This is very hard to do, so please appreciate it. This is variegated domesticum in this hand that I'm rattling, by the way. It's just head cutting. And that there's Monstera aurea. So that's what I'm saying. There is actually a difference between the yellows. So don't think that all yellow is equal, guys. Don't be put off yellow variegation generally because there's a lot of plants that are very manageable for yellow variegation. So although this one looks nicer in color, is a nightmare, is a nightmare. So this one does burn a lot, I won't lie. I have other plants of these that are not even in bright light and they're burning, but how I know I grow my plants here, I'm gonna lean towards underwatering for that because some of the bigger ones are not in the light in pots. And because we're in standalone pots, sometimes they can be missed and they can get underwatered. So it could be that. It could be that. But yeah, this is a massive pet peeve because when this happens, you've got two options really. And this showcases the two options quite nicely. One, you can just leave it like this and be like, hey ho. Two, you can cut it. Another problem with half moons, by the way, I might add, because this will happen a lot faster, a lot faster with a half moon. You're, oh my gosh, you are dancing with the devil. So you can either leave it like this or you can cut it. Those are your options. Or you can completely take that off, which in this case, yeah, I'd probably do that, you know. But I can't really photograph that. Not only that, but you may see, you may see that that one is also going. Again, I'm not sure what that could be. It could be underwatering, could be light, because these are stretching up a little bit. It depends where they're kept. There's some up top there that are closer to the lights. Some aren't. There's a tray back there, which I think is actually where my finger is settling on here, that tray there. They're, they're, they're quite far down and they don't seem to have much burn. They have the odd spot on them in places. I know, because that's not too close to the light in my opinion, but yeah. So this can happen. It's not very good. There are a few causes. I can't really stand here in a video and go, oh, do you have this? Here's how to fix it. Because it, it's just not that clear cut. And I know we would all love those answers, but it's just not. It's part of the reason why it's pet peeve. Oh, goody. It's raining again. Excellent. It's probably going to get really noisy in a couple of minutes. However, that was it for this week's video on, I don't know what I called it. So just keep in mind the title. Pretty much my top five pet peeves of growing houseplants. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe that's what I've ended up with. Thank you very much for watching this video. If there's other peeves that you have come up with that I haven't mentioned, let me know in the comments below. If I get enough of them, I might compile them into another video for you. So feel free to leave them down there and I will take a good look. I do love reading your comments because some of y'all get really irritated by things and then you write down what it is and I'm like, oh my God, yes. How could I forget this? So I would love to read your comments down below. So thank you very much for that. And I guess I will see you in the next video, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. I will love you and leave you. And I'll see you real soon. Bye.